Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of CNC Productions. And today we're going to be doing another entry in the Ark Survival Evolved dossier readings. This time we're going to be talking about the mammals of Ark Survival Evolved. And we're going to be starting out with the Basilosaurus. Diet Piscivore, Temperament Passive. One of the stranger creatures in the water surrounding the island is Basilosaurus. It's a powerful swimmer which is adapted to the shallow so remarkably well that it rapidly recovers from injuries when near the water's surface. Conversely, it's vulnerable to deep water pressure, which slowly causes it harm. Basilosaurus is usually closely followed by other predatory creatures, as its eating habits leave it plenty of scraps for scavengers to consume. It's a gentle creature towards humans and happily laps up food directly from them. However, the creatures that trail the Bassi tend to become dangerously enraged whenever this occurs, as it leaves no leftovers for them. Despite the hassle of engaging with one of these ornery followers, many tribes still attempt to tame the Basilosaurus, as its mammalian warm-blooded circulation provides a rider with the perfect amount of comfort from both the heat and the cold. Being apprehensive in nature, Basilosaurus is equipped with a defense mechanism that prevents it from being stunned or shocked. Alternatively, Basilosaurus is hunted perhaps too vigorously for its special blubber, which can be efficiently refined into gasoline. Next is the Castoroides, diet herbivore, temperament friendly. Castoroides is a large mammalian herbivore that tends to live near water. Unlike other larger beaver species, this one retains the chisel-shaped teeth of modern beavers. As is typical for beavers, they build dams as habitats, but the larger creatures on the island have a tendency to trample them. As a result, finding unsullied resource-rich dams in the wild is quite rare. Castoroides itself doesn't seem to realize how dangerous the island is. I don't know if it's simply too dumb to notice the dangers, or if it just doesn't care, but Castoroides happily goes about its day, playing in the water and gnawing on wood. The value of a tamed Castoroides is obvious from its physiology. The creature naturally gathers wood extremely efficiently, far more than most species on the island. It's not the strongest creature, so it can only carry limited amounts, but it's a natural lumberjack. Its saddle doubles as a mobile crafting station, which allows for producing complex items on the go. Next is Calicotherium, diet herbivore, temperament territorial. Found in small numbers within the island's colder regions, Calicotherium is normally a peaceful herbivore that prefers to spend its days lazing about or playing with its family. It is very territorial, however, and the entire family, young and old, will turn against an encroaching creature at just the slightest provocation. A memorable scene to stumble upon is a group of Calicotherium playing. One odd playtime activity for Calicotherium is hurling large balls of snow, or mud rocks, at each other. Smaller creatures in the area shy away from Calicotherium during this exertion for fear of being buried in the snow or gravel. While many creatures are useful while attacking a fortress, Calicotherium can be trained as mobile artillery. Its unique playtime habit becomes a rather devastating long-range assault tactic when it is given boulders to throw rather than just snowballs. Next is the Deodon, Diet Carnivore, Temperament Territorial. Deodon is the largest known species of Entelodont, an omnivorous family of ancient mammals that are sometimes referred to as Hell Pigs. Even though Deodon has as many similarities to modern Hippopotamidae as it does to Swina, I found them to be a suitable nickname. Deodon is as mean as it looks, and any survivor who wanders too close will find that out the hard way. As an omnivore with a voracious appetite, Deodon scavenges, forages, and hunts to survive. It has little qualms when it comes to its diet, and that has helped it thrive on the island's harsh tundras. Its temper hasn't hurt either, as many would-be predators would rather seek out less vicious prey. While many tribes have made excellent use of Deodon packs within their war parties, not only because of its fierce nature, but due to its extraordinary ability to rapidly heal itself. I've theorized that this healing factor is why it seems to have such a high metabolism, though what is particularly extraordinary is its capability to share this benefit with nearby creatures. I've even heard some survivors mention that the Deodon has also had a unique ability to root out rare mushrooms as well. Next is the Dire Bear. Diet Omnivore, Temperament, Territorial. Found primarily among the island's redwood regions, Arctotus Dyrus is an imposing creature. Many on the island have started calling it a dire bear, a name which is appropriate, both due to its enormity and its territorial nature. The dire bear ignores most non-hostile creatures while going about its day of scavenging for meat and edible plant life. That is, until intruders enter the territory it considers its own, at which point the creature ferociously attacks. Most often, it's smartest to just run away from an angry dire bear. 
Once tamed, the Dire Bear is a strong and reliable mount. It can carry vast quantities of goods and can sprint for extremely long, nearly infinite periods. It's not the fastest creature from a hard stop, but after building up momentum, its sustained overland speeds builds to among the best of the island. Of course, being able to feed a dire bear both meat and plant life makes keeping one fairly convenient regardless of the environment. The dire bear has a fondness for honey and can harvest it without getting stung or destroying the hive. Perhaps more rewarding, while you're riding it, those pesky bees will completely ignore you. Next is the dire wolf. Diet carnivore, temperament aggressive. The best adjective to describe Canis Max Dyrus is scary. This pack animal is a cunning and brutal predator, capable of taking down prey of nearly any size. In addition to being a vicious hunter, it's the size of a small horse, meaning even the largest predators aren't necessarily safe from the packs. Unlike most creatures on the island, the dire wolf is a dedicated pack hunter and rarely hunts alone. When in a pack, the dire wolves are naturally spurred to fight for their lives with increased effectiveness, while the most experienced dire wolves will be designed alpha and can gain even stronger enhancement. The species has an incredible affinity for teamwork. Obviously, dire wolf is a thrilling battle mount. It's fairly fast, very strong, and agile. It can leap almost as well as the island's battle cats. Riding a supercharged alpha dire wolf into battle at the head of a bloodthirsty pack is a thrill from which most warriors would gladly proclaim today is a good day to die. If utilized correctly, dire wolves can be a useful aid to your discovery efforts. It has developed a keen sense of smell and can detect things that most creatures can't. I've even seen them used to find creatures that are hidden beneath the surface. Next up is the Didicurus, diet herbivore temperament docile. Didicurus is one of the island's non-aggressive herbivores, generally found in the mountains and grasslands. Large and well-armored, it has a supply of fat under its place to keep it warm and fed in the cold. Didicurus is adapted well to the dangers of the island, perhaps even better than the Ankylosaurus. Didicurus has two very different reactions to predators. Against smaller foes, it generally uses its spiked tail to inflict as much damage as possible. Against larger predators, however, it pulls its tail underneath itself to form a solid armored ball that is completely impossible for your creatures to pierce from which it can actually roll away to relative safety. Didicurus is a highly prized work animal on the island. Its spiked tail is ideal for quickly shattering the large rocks, so Didicurus is a very effective quarry worker. In addition, its affinity for rocks has allowed it to carry stone at a reduced weight. In case their quarry gets raided, Didicurus raiders have a very difficult to kill mount. Next up is Equus, diet herbivore, temperament loyal. Equus Magnus appears to be an ancestor of the modern horse. Based on its stripes, it may be the African variant of Equus Giganteus, which appeared in North America during the Ice Age, but that is pure conjecture. Its behavior in the wild is similar to that of other wild members of the Equus genus. It sustains itself by grazing while keeping safe from predators by living in herds and outrunning its attackers via superior st stamina and speed. Horse and man have long been partners in survival, and this remains true in the island. In Equus, survivors will find a trusty steed or pack animal that can carry them swiftly across land. Taming an Equus has proven interesting, requiring carefully approaching the creature in the wild, mounting it, and then carefully soothing over time by feeding it vegetables. In fact, Equus's reliability has led some survivors to construct special saddles for them. I've even encountered a man who added extra saddle pouches that doubled as mobile crafting stations for chemical supplies, foodstuffs, and other items. Although not as robust as what you might find within a village, this utility helped him live a nomadic, solitary lifestyle. Some survivors employ Equus to herd and wrangle other creatures with a specialized lasso. This tool is sometimes effective for self-defense as well, as Equus is limited in battle on its own, at least compared to aggressive prehistoric carnivores. Next up is Gigantopithecus, diet herbivore, temperament, territorial. Gigantopithecus is a strange creature. It is usually quite passive, but it has a very short temper when it comes to its own personal space. Once another creature gets close, this gentle giant quickly becomes a rampaging beast. Best to give them a wide berth. I have occasionally seen Gigantopithecus jump in to grab vines they can traverse and swing on, but otherwise it seems most happy to lay about picking berries from plants lazily. In addition to being at home picking berries, a tame Gigantopithecus can be taught to harvest the fibers from the many island plants as well. It appears to be entirely content to pick at plants all day, eat the berries, and carry fiber resources for its tribe. Playful once tamed, Gigantopithecus seems to enjoy throwing the creatures or riders it's carrying into the air. 
It probably feels that this activity is a game, but clever brigands can use this game to vault over walls and small cliffs. Next is Hyenodon, diet carnivore, temperament, opportunistic. Among the island's most tenacious pack animals is Hyenodon dyrus, a carnivore most often found across the mountains and tundras in packs of three to five. The Hyenodon is a very intelligent predator. Before engaging, it determines if the payoff for a fight is worth the risk of injury. Hyenodon often prefers not to fight unless there is an already weakened prey or a fresh carcass nearby. This temperament changes quickly though after the presence of injured creatures. Hyenodon quickly becomes very aggressive. And in the pack that attacks with ruthless abandon, with each vicious chomp of scavenged meat, the Hyenodon rapidly recovers health and stamina. Despite being too small to ride, Hyenodon are still popular pets. Their intelligence means they train well, and their natural pack mentality makes them excellent hunting dogs. Their ability to quickly recover health by consuming raw flesh off the bone ensures they can take the punishment yet continue to fight, and they can efficiently preserve meat in specially crafted saddlebags. A common and terrifying sight on the tundra is a rider on a dire wolf with a pack of hyenodon at its side, howls and jeers echoing through the night. Next is the mammoth, diet herbivore, temperament, docile. Seeing the likes of the mammoth alongside dinosaurs is still strange. This behemoth towers over many creatures on the island and does not seem to fear anything but the Tyrannosaurus. Mammoths generally live in colder areas and have a herd mentality. I'm honestly not certain how the herds of mammoths find enough plant life to graze on some of the island's mountains. They must spend most of their time traveling between the mountain's cold summit and more lush base, or maybe the mammoth herds are the main reasons the summits are so barren. The mammoth is a difficult beast to domesticate, not because they are inherently stubborn, but because knocking one out to begin the taming process takes great effort. Once tamed, however, the mammoths are one of the only creatures on the island that can uproot trees without shattering them. Mammoth's affinity for wood allows it to carry harvested wood at a reduced weight. Next is the Megaloceros, diet herbivore, temperament, skittish. Megaloceros is a very skittish herbivore, found mostly in the forests and mountains of the island. Because of its large size, its fraught demeanor would be strange in any other place, but Megaloceros knows how fierce the predators of the island are and that it's safer to flee from them without risking its life in a fight. The antlers of the Megaloceros are very large and make for an excellent source of keratin. This of course makes it a valuable resource. Unfortunately, hunting Megaloceros is not easy because of their quick speed and the ability to bound over most obstacles. Megaloceros is jack of all trades creature and many who ride it value its versatility. It's decently powerful, and its resilience, speed, and ability to jump often come in handy. Finally, the male Megaloceros charging horn attack tends to cause targets to bleed, decreasing their health, stamina, and speed until healed. Next is the Megatherium, diet omnivore, primarily herbivore, temperament passive, but aggressive to insects. Megatherium is one of the larger mammals on the island. This is most shocking because it's essentially a giant sloth if you crossbred it with an elephant and a bear. Because of its size and girth, the Megatherium is uncommonly resistant to being knocked unconscious. Despite primarily being a herbivore, a typical Megatherium is very intent on consuming the island's many insects. It's particularly adept at removing their insides without damaging much of the shell, maximizing extraction of the chitin. The otherwise slow and peaceful Megatherium becomes faster and more aggressive in the presence of these creatures. Megatherium is an incredibly useful creature to tame, so long as you don't intend to fight other tribes. Its enormity, high resistance to torpor, and voracious attitude towards insects and arachnids make it ideal for farming large quantities of chitin from the bugs of the island or simply defending against them. Next is the Mesopithecus, diet herbivore, temperament, curious. Mesopithecus is an omnivorous monkey species, primarily inhabiting the island's jungles. It's smaller than a human, but can scurry about. It does not appear to be aggressive, unlike its relative, the Gigantopithecus, but it's rather very shy towards humans, likely due to their much larger size and lack of the hairy exterior. Due to their skittish nature, they can be difficult to tame. They can be hand-fed if you're patient, but stick too close to them for too long, and they'll get spooked and run away. A common pet, Mesopithecus is very easy to keep fed, it will eat nearly any fruit harvested on the island. Mesopithecus is most often used as a social companion, as it cannot carry enough to be a beast of burden, is not large enough to be ridden, and is not particularly good for combat. 
It is, however, quite effective at vocally warning of incoming intruders and pelting them with copious amounts of tossed fecal matter. Nomadic tribes have also managed to teach Mesopithecus to open locked doors when pillaging. Next is the Onic, diet herbivore temperament aggressive. Onic conicterus is one of the few omnivores I've seen on the island. They seem to live primarily off the mushrooms and moss within the caves, but they attack almost any non-insect on sight. They avoid Titanoboa whenever possible, which leads me to believe the snake to be a natural predator of the Onychonicterus. While flying in the dark caves would be difficult for any creature, Onychonicterus' ability to use echolocation has allowed it to adapt perfectly. It can be found idly flying around the caves as often as it can be found hanging from bits of the cave ceiling. Not large enough to be used as mounts, not strong enough to carry much, Onychonicterus still functions well as a guard animal. Whether protecting a vacant home or members of a tribe, the relatively vicious nature has its uses. Next is the otter, diet omnivore temperament friendly. Found along the island's many inland waterways, the otter has become exceptionally adept at hunting and foraging. This species of otter has to be particularly cunning because of its diminutive size and fierce competitions for its preferred food source, fish. It's not a creature that excels at combat and would not naturally pose an intimidating threat to any predators. Finding packs of river otters is simple enough. They're distinguished by their elongated bodies, bushy tails, and webbed feet. Their trusting and inquisitive nature ensures they're often hunted for their lustrous fur, but many prefer to tame them to become trusted companions. There are a few creatures which provide the companionship that the otter does. Rather than traveling beside you, it prefers to comfortably rest upon your back, providing insulation. Once domesticated, it can be told to harvest fish on demand, with a specific goal in mind. From, from the fish that it consumes, the otter has a knack for foraging silica pearls and can even yield a slight chance of finding black pearls within. Next is the Ovis, diet herbivore temperament stupid. Since arriving on the island, I have encountered dozens of fascinating creatures whose behavior has never been studied or documented, and also sheep. Granted, Ovis Arkham is quite different from the modern domesticated sheep, and even from wild sheep species. The unique markings on its face give it a striking appearance, and the male's horns possess a unique shape that is unlike any other species in the Ovis genus. As one might expect, Ovis stands little chance against the island's many predators. Like the dodo, its continued survival in the face of these challenges is a mystery. Some survivors have found herds of Ovis to be useful in farm life. Their wool can be repeatedly shapely sheared with the proper tools, and cooked lamb chops are a popular dish among some tribes as is their hypernutritious mutton. Every now and then, a survivor with a sense of humor will attempt to utilize Ovis as a mount, although the joke becomes significantly less funny once their slow Ovis is run down by a pack of raptors. One tribe has grown particularly attached to Ovis, perhaps uncomfortably so. I don't know the tribe's actual name, but I refer to them as sheep lovers. Next is the Paraceratherium, diet herbivore temperament docile. Paraceratherium is a massive long-necked herbivore that inhabits some of the island's grasslands. It resembles a gigantic horse-rhinoceros hybrid, but is over twice the size of either. Paraceratherium is a very peaceful and friendly creature. Barring some surprises yet in store for me, I can safely say that Paraceratherium is among the largest mammals on the island. While its size means that Paraceratherium can provide an incredible amount of food, it also makes it dangerous when hunted. A beast of burden second to the Brontosaurus, Paraceratherium is an excellent worker and is sufficient in size to support a platform saddle upon which structures can be built. It is a naturally friendly animal and is not afraid of humans. However, despite its normally calm demeanor, when it or its owner is provoked by aggression, the Paraceratherium can quickly become a real threat to the attacker and it will use its girth to its advantage in combat. Next is the Pheomia, diet herbivore temperament skittish. Pheomia is another one of the island's generally docile herd animals. They are small enough that almost any predator can bring them down, but large enough to provide plenty of meat. Were it not for the protection of their herd and the instinct to run from any predators, these would certainly be hunted to extinction. Pheomia's tusks and trunk make it exceptionally suited to scavenging plant life from the ground. It uses its tusks to dig up loose plant life, then it uses its stubby trunk to scoop the foliage into its mouth. Adult Pheomia often dig up food for their young, and watching a baby Pheomia attempt to use its trunk can be quite amusing. While it is completely possible to ride a Pheomia around, they are a meager choice. They work very well, however, as pack mules. 
If you feed the Theomia a stimberry, it serves as a laxative in the creature's digestive system. Knowing this, tribal communities often keep a herd of these as livestock to produce mass quantities of fertilizer. Next is the Procoptodon, diet herbivore, temperament, reactive. The first marsupial I've encountered on the island is the Procoptodon. Standing nearly 3 meters tall, it's among the largest jumping creatures I've heard of. It's a fairly peaceful herbivore that will immediately flee when aggressed upon. One of the Procoptodon's most unique features is its pouch. Unlike many pouched marsupials, Procoptodon's pouch is relatively dry and has little in the way of sticky or oily fluids. I assume this is good for the joey, but I have not figured out exactly why yet. Its other unique feature, powerful hind legs, can knock back aggressors much larger in stature. Procoptodons show great precision when leaping, as if they can accurately target the landing without fail. I have seen them effortlessly hop and land from heights that would flatten other creatures. It seems Procoptodon's knack for carrying things has increased its load-bearing capacity. Procoptodon's dry pouch makes it an excellent beast of burden that can carry far more than other creatures of its size. Additionally, it appears to provide an optimal environment for nourishing babies. So much that you, upon maturing, they have much more vigor. Next is the Sabertooth, diet carnivore, temperament aggressive. Smilodon brutalis is a solitary hunter, generally found in cold, lightly wooded areas. The island's mountains are the perfect habitat, as the mammal's fur keeps it safe from the bitter temperature. While its huge fangs are excellent for delivering death blows, the creature's claws can be just as deadly. Despite normally being a solitary creature, Smilodon brutalis are not opposed to hunting in small packs. In fact, they have to do this to take down larger prey such as mammoths. Enough saber-tooths can take down a Carnotaurus, perhaps even a Tyrannosaurus. Either way, Smilodon brutalis should not be underestimated. While not as fast as raptors, there is no denying the saber-tooth's increased resilience and power. In addition, well-trained saber-tooth can be taught to use their claws to flay corpses. This may sound morbid, but it's among the best ways to quickly gather large quantities of hide from the beasts of the island. Next is Thylacolio, diet carnivore, temperament, aggressive. Thylacolio is a large, powerful marsupial that can often be found hunting among trees among the island's redwoods. Its long claws and semi-opposable digits makes it an apt climber, a quality that Thylacolio uses to its advantage while hunting. It clambers up large trees and waits to ambush passing prey by pouncing upon them. When something that large jumps onto a target, the victim becomes stunned and doesn't stand much of a chance. Thylacolio's most notable fighting quality is its powerful jaws. Once it bites its prey, it locks its jaw into an iron grip that can hold most smaller creatures in place. Thylacolio then goes on to savage its prey with its sharp claws. If it needs to escape from a fight, Thylacolio uses its powerful hind legs to jump back to the safety among the trees. Thylacolio is a moderately strong mount, and its ability to climb trees and jump long distances makes it useful at traversal. As such, developing tribes often tame it. Small raiding parties particularly favor Thylacolio, as it's well suited to ambushes and unfair fights. Finally is the Woolly Rhino. Diet herbivore, temperament, friendly. Celadonta is a friendly herbivore common to the tundra and grassland regions of the island. It's a large and dangerous creature, though it seems fairly trusting of the fauna around it. Once attacked, Celadonta begins charging towards its foe. It builds up momentum as it charges, and depending on the ultimate impact speed, the results can be terrifying. With enough room to charge, it can even skewer the largest creatures in just one gore. When not being hunted for its horns, Celadonta makes an impressive beast of burden. Its ability to take on far larger opponents provides it sufficient charging room, as well as its sizable load capacity, make it a solid addition to any trading party or gathering expedition. Despite how powerful Celadonta are, many tribes still hunt them extensively due to their unique resources. Its horns can ground into a highly arousing powder, and its thick fur can support many insulating outfits, making the Celadonta in high demand. Even less advanced tribes use packs to hunt them down, though at significant peril. And there you guys go, those are all of the mammal dossiers from Ark Survival Evolved. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and check out the other dossier readings I have on my channel. Until next time, I will see you later.